make sure that you keep yourself muted and uh, you don't have your video uh, active. Uh, uh, otherwise, if you have any question during the workshop, you can use the chat. Uh, if you need to show anything to Michelle, I'm assuming Michelle will be happy to uh, share screen with you so you can show uh, the progress of your work. Um, so now I'm going to leave it to Ursula to introduce Michelle, and then Michelle will give you a short introduction. Please keep yourself muted, as said. And then we're going to ask you to all to go on YouTube to watch an introductory video uh, uh, that Michelle has prepared for everyone. So, mm -hmm. uh, here we yep. go. Also, you. I am so excited to be here and introducing everybody. I'm sure you will. Thank you, baby. Uh, super favorite of mine um, since forever. Um, really, one of the most um, integral and influential upcyclists, I think, in our generation. I'm a huge fan of her work, and we've been workshopping and fashion weeking and gossiping and meeting for years and years. So it's a huge pleasure to have her regularly at Fashion Open Studio, as it was a huge pleasure to have her regularly at Estetica. Michelle, over to you, and I can't thank you enough for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Ursula. That's uh, lovely to hear. And yes, we, we do know each other for a long time and um, went through the whole uh, fashion uh, uh, trade shows together, Estetica, yes, uh, a long time ago. So um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be working with you again. So thank you very much. Um, I just want to introduce, I want to start off by showing a video. Um, we've got a, we did a workshop last week with um, some students from the um, MA Bio at CSM. I've got uh, Grace with me today, who's from CSM um, Jewelry, bachelor's degree, and also Institute Marangoni. I have some master's jewelry students that came here last week and they made, um, they upcycled last week. And uh, we've got a short video by Eva Pujol. Uh, who put the video together um, so that you can be inspired to start the workshop. So it's a great way to start. They did some fantastic work, very exciting. So I hope you'll enjoy it. So if we could watch that, that would be amazing. So the, vi the, the video is now on uh, the chat for everyone. So please uh, use the link. And uh, if, you could, if you could go watch the video, and then once you finish, we're going to wait for you here on Zoom to start the workshop with Michelle. So for whoever has just joined, I saw a couple of people just arrived, please. Uh, uh, we're going to have a view of a video from uh, Michelle, uh, uh, which I share the link on the chat, and then we're going to come back uh, on Zoom for the rest of the workshop. Thank you. See you in ten minutes. Now, how long is the video, M Michelle? It's a, it's it's just shy of, of six minutes. It's not very long, but um, it, it's it's uh, yeah some really great results and really inspiring pieces that they did. So yeah. See you in five minutes, guys. So for whoever is please reshare the link. We can't see it on the. It's chat. on the chat. If it's on the chat. I, I shared it three times. I'm going to show it again. It's the YouTube link on the chat. Uh, sorry, it was going on the, on the waiting. Sorry, sorry, my fault. Here you go. Link on the chat. Sorry, guys, it was going on the waiting uh, room. I don't know why. Now it's there. So for who, everyone that has just joined, we are watching a video on YouTube. The link is on the chat. We can't, we can't put the video on from our side, can we? No.
Um, they, they've asked people to go on the link. I think I think what the I think because Zoom has problems around videos, they've asked yeah. people in the chat mm -hmm. to go through the link. But am I on the screen right now? No, it's you are in a small screen. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, no, they've asked people to. Um, I think it's the, it's just one of the issues with Zoom trying mm -hmm. to show videos. So I think I think that they've done that as a kind of um, as a way around it. it Um, Michelle, can you un unmute yourself, please? Yeah. Hi. Hi. So I think slowly people will start to rejoin the conversation as the video uh, will last. So we're going to give it three minutes roughly for everybody to be able to watch the full video. In the meantime, people are coming back on our... There is already a okay. question. Someone okay, was fantastic. saying... Uh, lovely film question. Should I have downloaded a pattern from somewhere? Thank you. Okay. And um, um, can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Okay, great. Great. So there was a question about the pattern. Someone, okay. was, someone was saying, should I have uh, downloaded a pattern from somewhere? Uh, did I think I sent, well, we'll show you how to make it and um, we'll show them the pattern to make um, and then we can have that available. It's not a problem. Perfect. This is the actual pattern. We're going to go through the process. It takes a little bit longer than this session to do. So uh, that's why we did the workshop to sort of show there's no way we could have done it in 40 minutes. You need a little bit more time and actually it's fun to take more time. So. Um, but this is the pattern uh, that we have. A, we've made a graph so that you can make it quite easily. 
but I can explain now. Um, so for anyone that has just joined, uh, I have shared a link for a YouTube video. Uh, so if you can watch the video and come back, but uh, mm, Michelle will start her workshop in one minute now. Okay, Michelle, you want to start? Sure, sure. Um, okay, great. So thank you for joining. And uh, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, there was some really, really uh, great, great work. And it shows you different ways that you can uh, be inspired and, and different interpretations, which is uh, really fantastic. So what I'm going to do is a sort of live demo right now showing you the process. Um, and now hopefully you're super inspired by seeing, seeing all the different versions. Um, but I'll go through the process of, of how, we, how, we, how we get there, basically. So the, the first uh, two steps are to, uh, you need to find a nice base fabric. It can be anything from your jeans. It can be uh, something you're, you're, you're getting rid of, a nice textile. I've actually got some denim, which is actually from last year. It's actually the Isco denim, by the way. Um, and I used, we use that. Um, but the first thing you want to do is to fuse, get a nice uh, fusing. This is a, a sort of medium weight, but heavy weight is even better. And fusing or interlining is a, is a material that you, um, you have a glue on and you actually press it onto the fabric. And you will create, a, this is a good example of something like this. So it's actually a lot stiffer. It's got a lot more body. And we need that because we need something to support our, um, our pleating area where we're going to pleat it. So it's a good way to start. So that's the first thing you need to do is make a decision about your base, which is here, and uh, give it body so that it can carry the weight of your middle section. The, the second part is really, really important. We've done a, a kind of generic uh, neck pattern, uh, which is here. And this is the pattern we've worked out. We can have this available to you. We've done it on a grid so that you can follow the curves very easily. And um, this can be adapted. Uh, this is actually the front and this is the back where the ribbons will go. And this is the front. So from here we'll have the pleating, which if you look here, you can sort of understand. Um, once you've got your pattern, you need two of these. You need a, a left and a right, which is obviously mirror image because you need both sides. Um, you can cut a paper pattern. Here's your, your paper pattern, which we have, which fits here. Um, so we've got the two, the two sides, which uh, if I go like this, you can see. And then uh, you need to cut uh, a back and a front. So we've got a front here, and we've got a, a, a back, which is our uh, lining, which will be uh, sandwiching your pleating in. So this is your, your, your section here. And as I said, your ties will be attached here. So you can kind of get a, a, a visual of that. Um, the next step for you is the fun part. I've uh, got a selection of uh, ribbons, which I've collected for many, many years. Uh, a lot of them are for factories. One of them was actually in Bethnal Green. I've actually got a bunch of ribbons from Norway. I had a 1980s ski company actually donate uh, a lot of ribbons. I have some from Canada, some from Hong Kong, some from Austria. Um, I, I, I collect all of these beautiful ribbons, but you don't have to use ribbons. If you saw, um, there was a, a, a Marte who, who was actually on the phone. She was actually recycling fabric and uh, sewing it and um, turning it. And then she was using that. You just need to uh, actually cut it at two centimeters because uh, you're going to be working with these uh, uh, loops. These we've used for this design square loops and the square loops are two, the inside measurement is two centimeters. So we've actually got um, uh, our ribbons here that you can start from. Uh, so you need to cut uh, two pieces 
and for each uh, section, one is 22 centimeters wide, one is, um, I'm sorry, 20, uh, 27 centimeters, and the other one is two centimeters uh, wide. So that's where you, it's, that's sort of the fun part, and you could even do fabric that you can let ravel or, or let the edges go. Um, you can get very creative in that, but you're starting to build uh, your design. And uh, this is sort of the starting point. I, as I said, I just have uh, a lot of ribbons that I um, have taken their offcuts and a lot of them were from factories where they're being unused. And I'm obviously quite a big fan. So um, the next part, uh, I actually want Grace to do, is I've got Grace with me. Um, we, the next part is the weaving section. So these are the, um, the section I'm going to showing you. I just want you to see some of the um, some of the options for the weaving. Um, and these are this is the sort of sandwich bit uh, now that you've picked your uh, your base. And um, this is the area where you can also get, by the way, um, different colors of these loops. Um, you can get these on eBay. Uh, you can get them. Um, unfortunately, in the world of uh, metal parts in the handbag and jewelry area, you, there's really not a lot of sustainable metal parts. It's an area that um, are upcycled. It, it just really doesn't exist. It's just unfortunate. But um, this is, these are the ones that we have. We have uh, uh, three different colors. And in this case, you might pick a certain, this has got gold, uh, copper, excuse me, copper with the orange and you can start to make your um, design decisions. So here we've got sort of, you're starting to shape up your design. We've got a couple of examples for you of how you're gonna start to shape and create your piece. You've got your bases, you can put your base here as well. Um, and I'm going to actually hand over to Grace, who is incredible at um, the pleating technique. And I'm going to have her come over here and I'm going to introduce you to Grace. And then she's going to do the, the pleating technique because she's actually better than I am. <laughs> so, um, and she has much nicer hands. So I'm going to let her do that. Uh, go ahead, Grace. Hi. So this is Grace. And as I said, she's really good at the pleating technique. And she's been working with me in my studio. So we're going to try and go in a little bit closer so we can go really um, really close to her, and um, if I can do this, it's, it's sorry for my bad camera work. Uh, okay, Grace, we're zooming in on your hands. Okay, so uh, there's the ribbon. So we've cut the ribbon that we're going to work with, um, and she's going to. Okay, there's there's the mouse that we the we can put this here actually. Um, so now she's just going to show us the uh, how to do the pleating, and. Um, this is really important. You can actually, we had a, a Celine uh, that was working with us last week, did a different version. She did like sort of a lengthwise version. So it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, you can go which way you want to, but um, we're gonna show you one way just to get the basic technique, which you can then, if you want to change or be creative with, of course uh, you can do that. So Grace has got two of the squares, which she's now gonna put on the ribbon. And uh, go ahead, Grace. And she's laid them out uh, in a kind of overlapping pattern. That looks great, Grace. And if we can just look at that right now. Okay, so you can see she's got a kind of overlapping uh, pattern. And now she's going to come back and uh, through the overlap. and go back down into the, into the loop. And if you can show that to us, Grace, that would be great. Okay, so you can see the sort of um, pleating effect it's gonna have. The other thing is um, with these metal loops, you can start, they'll, they'll, they'll add a little bit of weight and they'll actually curve to the shape of your body. So um, you get a really nice uh, kind of drape in the middle that follows, um, the, your neckline and she's doing another one where it's overlapped. And then if you go back through Grace, uh, that's great and back down. 
Okay, that looks very, very nice. Okay, so you can, as I said, you can see the, the pleat is actually quite smooth and um, you can go straight through again. So you do your two uh, rows uh, and actually, if you notice the piece that Grace is actually wearing, I'll just, I, she's actually wearing a three, three strand, which just means that if you work with the three strands, you have to adapt your base to accommodate the, um, the you know, you could add as many as you want. You could do this as a huge collar if you wanted to. We're just doing the sort of basic. So here she's doing more. You can see why I have Grace doing this because I'm actually, uh, she's a lot smoother than I am. Um, and if we go on, uh, you can see the technique that we use. And once again, this could easily be upcycled fabric. You could use um, any kind of upcycled texture. It's actually really nice to have fringes or uh, rough fabric with really nice edges as well. Um, it can look, really, really um, great as well, depending on the look that you're going for. As I said, I, I, I'm just a bit of a ribbon hoarder. So uh, that's, that's sort of um, what, what, what we actually worked with. Okay, so um, I don't know if there's any questions about that technique that anyone wants to ask or if that's sort of clear, um, let me know. Um, I can't see the chat actually. So uh, Filippo, if you, if you um, if uh, if you so, let me know if there's so any far, questions. So far, so good, Michelle. No questions. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. Okay, so the next thing we're going to show you is once you've got your base, you want to start looking at it in between um, what you've got your pleating. Excuse me, the pleating. You you want to start. Uh, okay, Michelle. Sorry to interrupt. I got a couple of questions coming in. Not sure, sure what ahead. a twelve square means. Oh, I mean 12 squares per row. Good question. So this is 12 squares and this is uh, 15. So it's, it's the I number. Grace... Yeah. yeah. And so... where can you get where can you get the square loops? We're gonna send to everyone the link uh, where you can get all the material and everything after the uh, call. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I mean metal loops. So uh, that's absolutely right. It's, it's just a matter of the way I'm saying it. They're, they're a bit weird because I don't know how. I don't really know what to call them. So they're they're sort of metal loops, square metal loops. You can get them in other shapes. We've just used this one because we like the size. The most important thing is the inside measurement is two centimeters for this particular pattern. And we we after doing several of them, we figured out that if you do 12 of the square loops on the top and 15 on the bottom, they, it, it's obviously lower down. So you get like, a, you start to get a kind of curve that um, can sit in the base and, um, and you can start to, uh, uh, you can start to create, because the, the one on the bottom obviously has to be longer. So that's really uh, why we've, we've given you exact amounts. You can get them, we found them at um, Amazon. Uh, uh, if you want small amounts, I think Etsy has them as well, but I think they were very expensive. So the ones we found that they were the most uh, affordable were actually at um, uh, on um, eBay. eBay and um, uh, I think the Amazon ones were expensive as well. So eBay, sorry, eBay. I think I included a link actually. So, um, once you've got your pleating, as you can see, these ones are sort of on their way to be, you know, your design process is here. Um, you've got your pleating done. The next step is to create an edge. Now you don't have to do this. Um, this is optional, of course. I've included some uh, pipings. This is uh, obviously, I mean, I've got a, a studio, a, a sewing studio, so, uh, for me, I actually have it, but um, you can always uh, buy some of this or you can actually make it. Um, if you actually just have cord, you can cut bias and sew and make your own piping. It's, um, it's, it's actually uh, not that difficult to do either. Um, but what I'm going to show you is a, um, a technique. This is a part of a, a lace uh, piece that I had and I started to cut off uh, rows of it, if I show you. This one, 
which is really, really cute. And um, I'm going to, I think it was in the, it was actually in the video. So there's a, if you want to put your piping to give it a nice edge, um, you can basically uh, glue it and it, it, you don't have to sew it, this part, you can glue it. If I show you, um, as I said, I started to do it in the other, um, in the other video. Uh, you can glue it down and go around. And then if you put it this way, I've still left a really raw edge here. Uh, still left a really raw edge, but it's really cute. This is this one's actually really sweet with the, the little uh, lace edge, even with the raw edge, I think is really, really, really sweet. And you can just go all the way around. Um, and as, this is actually a really good glue. The Yoohoo glue is quite good. Um, and you can go around. And uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to show you the whole thing. It's not, you can sew it, but I actually found the sewing quite difficult. Um, uh, and I'm, uh, because the, the, it's hard to get the, the um, hard to get close to it, but this seems to work um, quite well. And you're going to be putting a lining on it and sandwiching it anyway. So it's quite, it's quite okay. And here we are. So it's quite, it's quite sweet looking. You can just, I could press this now and flatten it. Oh, I've got dirty hands, not sure why. Um, I can flat, press this and then we're ready. Um, in this case, we've got a little um, sort of plaid. Um, it's quite sweet, this one. Actually, that's at the bottom. Let me just move that. And then you're ready for your, to start to work with the curve, which is the front, which is where the weight is and uh, the curve. And then we've got our two linings, which is you can do any color for that here, which will be sandwiched. So um, once you're at this point, the next thing you need to do is to cut your, um, your ties. So you've got your bases. I'm just going to cut this here. Um, now you need your ties. And we've actually done them at um, 37 centimeters. This is actually one centimeter uh, ribbon. But once again, you can easily do it with your fabric. And you can have raw edges, which is quite lovely as well. Um, and we've got uh, 37 uh, and we've, we've actually put two ribbons. So we've decided for our design to actually add two ribbons, which is quite nice. The reason why is because the, it's easier to tie behind your back. Uh, it's actually a nicer, a nicer, a softer way. So it's not so lumpy in the back. Um, and this is a, a really nice soft ribbon. that's not uh, gonna, gonna bother you. So if I cut this at, 37, um, I'm gonna do four of them. And now I've got my um, ties. Actually, I should be with ribbon like this. You should be cutting it on the angle because that will help uh, keep it. And I'm gonna do the other one here. Got another one to do. Um, and once again, this is optional. We're just giving you um, what we found work and of course, there's, look, oh, I just went out of ribbon. Okay, uh, we've got, we've got uh, you know, you can do anything you like, but we're just giving you um, ideas. So once you've got your ribbons, I've got two ribbons here. Um, you can then, we've sort of done the right size. So you can actually attach them here. This can be sewn. Uh, if you don't have access to a sewing machine, you could always hand sew that. Just do a little tiny stitch and hand sew it. You can do it on a domestic machine at home. You can actually glue it as well. Um, obviously the sewing is probably the better option. Um, I'm just gonna pin it uh, and I'll show you the other side. Um, wait a minute, I've got the lining underneath. And here's the lining and what it looks like at the back. So um, there's your, there's your, you're ready now to go to the, the next stage. You've got your ties. You've got your, your edge, you've got your pleating and your base. Uh, so we've got a few um, designs here. This is uh, um, uh, here. So the next step you have is um, you want to do a, um, you want to do a fit actually. So we've got our um, very glamorous uh, golden, golden edges here. Uh, 
so the next thing is you want to you want to pin this and um this is really important because it's slightly on an angle and uh you want to actually try it on once you've got these pieces pinned in place um you 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 need to check it on the body and see i think that was in the video uh we had uh sonia with uh with her um, trying on just to make sure that the drape is okay and it's slightly on an angle um hey, michelle, once again this video. michelle what's yeah, up okay. all good all good sorry we lost you for a moment thank you oh okay we, we don't have the best internet here so sorry about that uh it's a bit dodgy but the room is quite sunny so um so so here's a really great example where um, now this really needs to be put on the body uh, where you check the actual drape and make sure that it sits right. In some cases, you may have to take out a loop. You may have to adjust it in some ways, but you want to work um, on your body with this and check the drape and check how it's, um, how it, how it's uh, curving around you. And of course, everyone's individual, uh, depending on the way your shoulders are, your neck, and maybe how you want to wear it. So this is a really important stage. Maybe you can have someone help you if you're by yourself, but um, you, you just need to re, re get this so that it suits your, your body and the way that you would like to wear this. So this is actually really important. In this stage, um, you will, so now you will go on to the sort of final stage, which we've got a piece here, another, I guess we're doing the golden ones today, uh, another golden piece. So in this case, uh, oh, by the way, and after you've fitted, you need to, um, this is a, a good, it would be good to, to, to sew this. You can sew this with a zipper foot on the domestic machine or the industrial machine, or you can do it by hand. Um, you can glue it, but uh, it's got a little bit of weight. So you're probably better off uh, with, with just a little stitch here to hold it. So we're almost uh, closing in on the end here. Um, here's your, 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 your final stage. In this case, we've decided as well to maybe add, if you saw in the, in the video, we had um, uh, the, the, the workshop last week, uh, a lot of people were really interested in adding beads and um, uh, buttons and a bit more, uh, you know, really getting into the surface here. You have a nice little surface to work with. And you can see some of the great variations I think Flora did an amazing fringe, and um, Yi Hang also did buttons. It, so um, it was, yeah, uh, it, it looked, it, they looked, they started to look really, really finished, and they looked like they were um, having fun with with um, adding and, and sort of creating as you're going. In this case, I, I was just thinking we could put um, a, a bit more of the ribbon there. The other thing I would suggest um, is where you've got your edge here. It's a bit of a raw edge if you want to bit of a more finished look. I would also um, cover that and very neatly. You can easily glue that, make sure your, your edge is under and then glue that in a really nice way in the back. Um, you can sew it as well, but you, this in this case, if you've got a nice glue, the glue will actually stay and uh, because we're working with fabrics, but this is uh, uh, another way you can go. And by the way, it's reversible. So you can do both sides. I mean, maybe not so much texture because it would be a bit bumpy, but um, so this is our back. I haven't actually glued these, but uh, we're now ready for our lining. So we have our linings that we cut from the beginning and we just need to really lay this on uh, perfectly. Michelle, and, um, actually sorry to interrupt these. you, it's, it's 10 minutes now. Uh, before okay, we we're, we're actually winding up right now. So that's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so in this case, I would put my lining uh, and then you can easily do your finished ribbon at the top where you're, um, you've got your little edge and then you, you, you have it so that it's perfectly finished. And you've got your nicely finished piece. Once again, you could easily come along and add something here. Um, and as you can see from the, the video, we had, um, we had buttons and beads and uh, different uh, decoration. You could, you could easily um, uh, do an embroidery, anything you wanted, you could add. It's not a huge space to sort of work with, 
but it's quite nice because you can have quite um, a nice effect. I mean, um, Isaac did a huge, huge beading on it, which was too fantastic as well. Um, so, I mean, it's up to you. It's all personal, uh, personal choice. And really, that's it. That's sort of the process. Um, it's a great way to upcycle and sort of be creative. It's a small piece, but um, it's, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully um, it's, a. Uh, it's it, it's a nice way to upcycle in a, in a, in an accessory. So Michelle, so, thank um, you. Uh, as I mentioned on the chat, uh, um, we're gonna put this on on the uh, Fashion Revolution YouTube channel if that's okay with you. Yeah. And I ideally forward the list uh, and in, and instructions so people can uh, again find potentially the materials and everything that is needed and execute this workshop. Sure. I don't know if you if you finish in terms of the the um, tutorial. I, yes. Uh, I was wondering. I mean, I, I, I as also I mentioned, I know, I know I know you since many years now, and I know how much work. And I mean, you are you are an educator. You do exhibition. You have your own collection. I mean, there is so much about you. So I don't know. It seems difficult to find somewhere an angle to start with, but. Maybe it's a good this last five minutes if you want to tell us a little bit more about your practice, your work, your background. Uh, I don't okay, know if, that, sure. if that's the case. I think there is so much that there might be. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I have a, a, a practice um, which uh, I did actually ready to wear for 10 years. And then um, in uh, 2010, I actually was uh, mentored by um, this. Uh, LCF and the Sustainable Center for Fashion, they had a program about um, teaching designers. I think I was in the first cohort of designers to really educate over a year on sustainability. And at that point, I decided that I would just change my whole business. And I started to do um, upcycling and work with accessories. Uh, one of the reasons why I did up, uh, accessories was because, quite frankly, they were smaller. So it's easier to upcycle at that time. So um, I met you guys uh, back in the day um, at Aesthetica at British Fashion Week, which um, Ursula and Filippo had, had their own line from somewhere. And we were both showing in um, an area in, um, in British Fashion Week, uh, there was a whole area dedicated to sustainable fashion, which, which was uh, quite novel at the time and, and quite incredibly forward thinking actually, uh, the whole area. Um, so it's very, very different landscape than it is now. There really wasn't much around. So it was a fantastic uh, vehicle to show your work. So um, it's really interesting because the last time I saw Ursula, um, it was at a, a, one of the Fashion Revolution meetings. And um, it was really interesting because she was talking about the back in the day when we started, there was a huge uh, uh, desire and pull to create work that didn't look like it was upcycled, that needed to look like, to, you're almost like hiding it. And it, it's super interesting to now that a lot of the young designers that are coming up are much more honest and authentic about their recycling. It's, it's very, very much um, showing the raw edges, showing it's put together. And it's, it's a really interesting landscape now. It's, it's the, the whole aesthetic of, of uh, recycled and upcycled design has changed. It, it's super interesting. Um, so I come from the school of a little bit, a little bit, um, a little bit slicker in, in my, um, uh, my, my design aesthetic, but um, I'm, I, I'm really loving the, the new, the new sort of um, look that's coming through. It's really fantastic because it's really honest, which is uh, fantastic and, and uh, important right now in um, fashion. So I also do, I also lecture on um, materials and um, uh, sustainability. Uh, at the moment, I'm at Institute Marangoni, uh, uh, teaching the master's jewelry and also uh, the styling uh, textiles and foundation as well. Uh, but I also have a practice. Uh, I'm, I have a. Uh, at the moment, I'm working with um, a woman, uh, Jasmine Lennington, who does uh, seaweed, and uh, Rachel Close with the Sustainable Secret Company, and we've just um, done a collection uh, together which has been very slow to put up, up online. But um, yeah, so I'm doing that. Um, I'm also uh, studying at uh, CSM at the moment uh, at the, with, at the um, bio, bio um, the 
the MA biodesign. Um, so, uh, which is super exciting because I feel like it's the next phase of sustainability. So that's uh, really, really exciting. And that's why I was lucky enough to have um, some of my uh, 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 colleagues join us uh, last week that were uh, in, the, um, in the video as well. So um, I don't know if there's any other, that's like a whirlwind uh, <laughs> fast. I'm talking yeah, I mean, a lot. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's just touching the sort of uh, 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 actual landscape. But yes, as I said, we, we, we really uh, been crossing each other for, for, for many years and on different yes. projects. And it's, it's so wonderful to, to still kind of, and, and so you basically, you enrolled in a course in, at, at CSM in the bio, uh, biology course, in the biomaterial yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting, yeah, so I didn't know that. I feel I got... like that's quite, quite an interesting uh, way forward because upcycling is really important. I mean, this is a small drop in the ocean of what we can possibly do. But I do actually think that biodesign is sort of the future. I have to say I'm not particularly the best biodesign student, <laughs> but uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, I got I a couple of ni very nice messages, Michelle, for you. Uh, uh, Michelle, this is from Sue saying, Michelle, this is fabulous. Can't wait to get the pattern and make one. And then the other one is, this is brilliant. I love that. This is from Ava. This is brilliant. I love that you can personalize it so much. Fabulous and can't wait to start. Thank you ever so much for inspiring me. So Great. I think what's also interesting you. what you were saying about the aesthetics and throughout the workshop, as you were suggesting and that this could be done with new, but also with uh, upcycle and also kind of, uh, you can create your own uh, uh, material uh, uh, and, and sort of uh, start uh, from scratch so so that's that's the kind of spirit and it's true that uh, 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 the more honest you are in in, in your creative process uh, the better the results so that's that's yeah that's absolutely. kind of rule for everyone and, and probably just um you know the making is so nice and during covid i know a lot of people have been making a lot i think knitting has gone up embroidery it's it's yeah it's, it's uh, great to be making as well it's a really nice it's a great it's a great skill and um uh, as I say, it's only a drop in the ocean to make a small thing like this with upcycling. But uh, yeah, but we uh, got this week we got quite a few drop in the ocean. So I think good, it, good, it, good. Uh, we uh, we Excellent. hopefully hopefully we managed to build a big drop uh, uh, okay. during this week of Fashion ocean. Revolution week. St still a drop, but okay. Uh, we we like dropping around. Listen, there exactly. there are more. Uh, Bravo, Michelle! Beautiful and so interesting. Look amazing. Like your mask creation from Arun. And then oh, yeah. love to connect with you. Thanks for sharing knowledge from Marco. So I did share uh, 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 Michelle uh, website and Instagram. I'm going to share it again for all. So oh, you thank can you, then. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, I think if there is no more questions and Michelle has been incredibly fast and incredibly well organizing and showing us today uh um how to do it uh, so if there is no more question i would say we leave michelle to her sunday uh yeah uh, thank you i just want to say something we did last year just to finish it up yeah. last year we did a small production of 10 pieces which we ended up um uh, uh auctioning for action aid bangladesh um so we're gonna do that again this year so um we're gonna we're gonna actually we're, we're making a, a group uh and um we're we're gonna we're gonna um uh we're gonna be auctioning it off we're gonna be working with action aid again because it's a great organization it works with uh girls and women and um that's our that will that's what we'll be doing with the the last production which we did last year as well so um if anyone's interested look out for that i'll put it on my instagram but um thank you so much for joining me and thank you so much uh filippo and ursula um, all the Fashion Revolution team, thank you, uh, Grace and Ava, and all the people that joined me last week. It was really great, and I really appreciate the um, that you guys uh, uh, helped out as well. It was fantastic. So thanks so much. Michelle, and, thank um, you so much. Very, very always beautiful to have you with us. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to say bye. I'm going to jump out. And there is actually there's Katie Jones in 15 minutes, the next workshop today. So I'm going to join her right now. Uh, okay. So maybe I'm going to see some of you joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Have a great Sunday. Thanks a lot. You too. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.